Um, today I wanted to give you an example of um, an arts integration lesson, very simple to use. And sometimes I always offer a free lesson on Fridays or a free document of some sort on Fridays over at educationcloset.com. But sometimes it's easier to see it. So today's lesson is all about conducting and math. So um, this connects to geometry and math. It can go with grades four, five, six, seven, eight. It can go all the way up to high school if you really wanted to expand it that far. Um, it's, it's kind of up to you on where you want to take this. All right, so in geometry, when you're studying angles, you're measuring angles, you're measuring diameter, you're measuring radius. Um, a, a really neat way to help kind of put that together and help it make sense for a lot of kids is to create some sort of kinesthetic uh, way to to show that. So, <coughs> excuse me, in music, one of the things that I teach, especially in my fifth grade, is conducting patterns. Um, there are several different conducting patterns out there. There is a four, measure four conducting pattern, there is a three conducting pattern, and there's a six conducting pattern that are pretty common as well as a two conducting pattern. So um, I'm just going to start with the four pattern today. What I would do in an arts integration lesson combining geometry and conducting would be to start kids listening to a piece of music and conduct it one, two, three, four. Truly you're going down, okay, then to the left, my left, your right, then going to my right, then going straight up to meet where you started. So you are creating a right angle right there. You are creating another right angle on a different plane right over here. And you're creating the connection right here to make that triangle. So if you were to put that on the board, usually what I do is I demonstrate the four pattern. One, two, three, four. And then I draw it on the board so that students can see the angles themselves. Then I have them measure it on the board. So to check to make sure it's a right angle. Then I would have them write it on their own paper, write out where the numbers are for the four pattern, measure out the angles themselves. Then I would have them conduct it. Now, keep in mind this is difficult because they have to cross planes with their hands. And so you're connecting the right and the left brain at the same time when you're doing this. Um, it is difficult for some students, so it needs to take a little bit of time. You need to use a great piece of music. My kids happen to really like Katy Perry at the moment. Whatever works for you, I'm not saying it has to be classical, but it needs to be something that has a distinctive four pattern. One, two, three, four, when you're listening to it. Um, then you have all the students work together, down, left, right, up. That looks pretty stiff, doesn't it? Yeah, because we're making straight angles. When you look at a true conducting pattern, there is not a straight angle in there other than coming straight down. When you come straight down, that's your straight line, but then you usually curve to get to the next one, and you do another curve to get to the next one, and then you do a scoop up. So that way, this looks a little bit more like a conducting pattern that you would see, right? So then I'd have them do the same process that they did before with, this, with the straight lines, but this time, I draw it on the board with the curve. This makes a half circle, if you think about it, which allows you to measure radius and diameter. Um, you can also then move this over, measure the um, way that shapes move, how there are curves and angles together. That's great. Um, after you do that measurement, then I would do the conducting pattern again. Everybody do the conducting pattern with a piece of music. Um, and then you can move on to try other different conducting patterns, like a three pattern, which is simply down, right, up. Again, this is a mirror, so you would be going down, right, up. Okay, that would be a three pattern. One, two, three. That's a traditional waltz. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Something that's in two would be very quick. It's very similar to a four, four pattern, but instead of going one, two, three, four, you'd be going one, two, one, two, one, two. So in essence, it is a, is a curve followed by another curve right up, okay? So that when you're doing that in your math lesson, you're going up and down and up and down. And then a six pattern can either be an abbreviated three 
One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Or you can just do one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's kind of up to you. So experiment with a couple of different pieces. See when you're listening to it what number you count to. That's how you determine what meter it is. And then um, kind of work on explaining that so that it becomes a measurement tool as well as an arts tool. Um, the arts integration lesson itself, you would be uh, teaching conducting patterns for music and you would be teaching measurement of angles for math. Those would be your content objectives. And then your assessment would be whether or not they can measure the right angles, whether or not they can measure diameter and radius, um, which it should be part of your regular assessments anyway. And then the music assessment would be whether or not they can do the conducting pattern, whether they can perform the conducting pattern with a piece of music that you're playing correctly and um, using the correct angles and motions. So I hope that that gives you a great idea of um, an arts integration for music and math. And if you're looking for some other great ideas for other arts integration lessons, please visit us at www.educationcloset.com. Thank you.